Is the veteran pattern a solidly made EUC? Well, in this video, you're gonna find out about it. Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we're going to disassemble the veteran pattern, do some minor repair work, and change a tire. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. First up, huge thanks to my e-wheel and Leaper Kim for providing me this wheel for testing purposes and letting me actually keep this wheel. Thanks to that, I'm able to make some more long-term tests and give you guys the real user experience about this wheel. So the veteran pattern is Leaper Kim's newest EUC with a 126 volt system. And just like every new veteran wheel, it has some major changes in design, but also carries some common things through from the veteran Sherman S, like the suspension system from Fast Ace. The theme in the veteran pattern is screws, a lot of them. Those steel screws have different lengths though, so make sure you keep track of which ones go where. I'm not the biggest fan of the pretty soft aluminium body of the veteran pattern. It's very easy to strip threads and make your screws not hold at all. After removing 8 of those steel hex screws on the top, we can see the plastic top cover of the pattern. It's really sturdy and I like its design. Additionally, you can see that there is a second layer of plastic which protects the motherboard. I'm a fan. There is a layer of silicone around this top plastic cover which helps with water resistance. I think it's pretty good here. However, it's not the best for servicing as you need to reapply silicone every time you want to detach the top cover from the wheel. The battery wires have separate plus and minus connectors, which is nice. There's also fuses on this wheel. However, no smart BMS. The batteries are sealed with blue shrink wrap, which is great. Keep in mind though that this top area doesn't have any seal around it, so there might be some water splashing or spilling into this general vicinity, so I would really like to see some waterproof connectors. I don't know if this is the case with those ones, and some better sealing for those wires going into the battery. Those connectors have communication wires to the motherboard from the battery management system, so that is great. I definitely do not like the charge port placement and the flap on the veteran pattern. Now this might change with further batches, like pretty much everything about the wheel might change in further batches. This is like the first edition ever demo unit. But anyways, I am not a fan of those GX16-5 ports as those pins are a bit easy to bend, especially if you just turn around the connector just because you want to fit the connector in. Bigode chose a way better connector with the GX20-4 for their 134 volt wheels. Putting the veteran pattern on charge is a two-handed job and you best also align the connector in order to fit it in smoothly. By unscrewing several other screws, we can remove the front bumper. It is pretty robust and I like the modularity here. Also has a integrated light and beeper. This beeper is very loud, actually too loud in my opinion, when it comes to turning on and off the wheel. If you get with this wheel somewhere inside, I, I just don't want to turn it off because it's so obnoxiously loud. The light is also blinding, which sucks. It could work well as a mask though. Even though it's a lot more screws to remove, I prefer that to the Sherman S, which doesn't feel as sturdy as the pattern. The pattern is just so dense and it doesn't bend in any way when you're riding it. So having more screws is both an upside and a downside. Although I don't think it's tiresome really to disassemble the wheel. The taillight unit is pretty nice and it does have integrated turn signals and as usual the headphone jack which connects it to the motherboard. Not too bad, although could be brighter for a taillight. Now we'll be removing the trolley handle which is in the back and it's a very usable trolley handle. However, okay, this so still feels so, so cheap, can you please make it out of metal? Just in case, as we disconnected the batteries, we also turn on the wheel for a second to make sure that the capacitors are discharged. By the way, if you just want to change a tire on the veteran pattern, make sure you check out two cells, one pack, as they made a great video about the tire change on this wheel. Now we are removing a further eight screws per side, which hold the suspension pistons connected to the shell of the wheel. 
they were holding nicely and tightly so nothing got loose there if you want to make sure that they never get loose just put on some blue thread locker on them to make sure that they're not going anywhere Oh, by the way, the kickstand is also very sturdy and nice. Now that we removed all of those pieces, we can just remove the battery cover and battery itself from the wheel. And circling back to the beginning, we could already find where the loose spots of the pattern were. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can see the movement very much here. Just need to find out if it's on the coil itself or screws, but it feels like screws. I need to tighten them here on the bottom. Well, it's not a optimum easy tire change, I would say, as we have a lot of screws, but at least we don't have to remove the face wire connector. This can just dingle dangle, and uh, you can change the tire without disconnecting the face wires. Also, a big heat sink here on the bottom. Clean. This top plate holds both halves together. I wish it would be two levels or a bit more structurally sound, but it's pretty thick, so I hope it won't be bending or breaking upon falls or longer wear and tear of the wheel. There's also additional structural support from the pistons connected to the motor of the wheel. And I will remove the left side of the wheel, the left battery case, which of course is also a structural element of the EUC. We can see that there's some sort of scratch here on the top, not sure where it comes from, well, probably suspension, we'll keep an eye on that. On my unit, the bottom part is made out of plastic, not aluminium, so this is not as structurally sound and probably cause for one of the wheels that I saw on forums to have their batteries pop out. Not optimal. The pedals feature a Shrek-inspired mud basin, so you can be sure that dirt will not allow you to have grip, even with those studs on the pedals. Additionally, MTB studs are better, those milled-in studs don't provide as much grip. This clamp, which we're removing right now, is probably the culprit of vibrations on the pattern. Now, we tightened them later, but I still had some sort of movement, some loose spot on this wheel. which made it at times a bit vibrating or not as tight as I would want it to be. It seemed that the tolerances of this clamp are just not well made. Maybe that change in later units, but I would probably need to get a different clamp than that, because even with those screws tightened, as said, still a bit of loose spots on this wheel. My pattern has the heaviest spring, the 66 pound version for heavier riders or hardcore off-roaders. It is a cool design when it comes to just serviceability because it is just a spring with oil inside and there wasn't much oil leaking on this one. However, I didn't use it for such a long time, just 150 or 200 kilometers on the specific shock. On the top, you have the rebound adjustments on this coil and on the other one you have compression adjustments as well as preload which is all the way in now. I do like those shocks, they're very tight, they're massive, they're beefy, I'm a fan of that. The biggest downside is that you can't use any other aftermarket shocks and the travel is one centimeter less than on the Sherman S and you can feel that. So here we have the motor bolt screws and the screws for the mudguard. Still no bridge. But at least we have some metal here, I guess, but it's kind of plastic, yeah, it's, so whatever. It's screwed, it's screwed in like two parts. Yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just plastic. So, still looking for a bridge, but it's getting better because of the more robust shell. Just like on the Sherman S, there is no bridge connecting those two coils, so we have an actual sturdy fork. But because the shell of the pattern itself is more robust, I feel like this mechanism is working a bit better here. So let's, let's check those screws, if they're tight or not. Well, this one is for sure. All of the motor bolts were tight and covered with Loctite, so that is great. And the quality is sufficient, you're not afraid to strip the bolts or the screw head right away like on the S22. Good job here. Once we checked all of the screws, we reapplied some Loctite on them. And afterwards, screwed them back into the wheel. Just make sure you get into the thread correctly and don't destroy it. Tighten them in using a manual wrench. Later we remove the plastic bridge which holds the mudguard in place as well as the phase wire on one side. 
This plastic is pretty solid, I can't really complain here. The mudguard is pretty sturdy and big, however it still does splash a little on the back and on the front. Could be better, but already a pretty great job here. Now a couple words on the tire. Can you see how destroyed the thread is? It's actually crazy. It doesn't have much grip on the street and it seems pretty slippery. Because the surface area is also so small, it's well, great for off-roading with those knobs and big spaces in between them. But on street use, it just gets annihilated. This tire has about 1200 kilometers on the clock and I've never seen a tire just so badly torn apart. The rim on the other hand looks solid, there's no bend on it, although I was doing stairs with this wheel, it has a nice thick bead in the middle, it's a good rim and a good motor, I can't lie. The tire on the other hand is a sock, which is partially good for uh, longer range, but I just want to have something more durable on this wheel out of the box. This is not meant for the performance and riding style you want to have on, on a pattern. I decided to change it for a Heidenau K34 12 by 3 inch street tire pretty much with small knobs. It's a lot quieter, it's a lot more solid and I'm already enjoying it more than the tire that was previously on this wheel. So that's the pattern and I leave the conclusions to you. There's so many things changing in wheels nowadays, there's batches improvements and then stuff gets worse again so it's really hard to judge for me if a problem is disastrous or it's been fixed or not and it's hard to keep up with all of those changes so for me the pattern as it is now it works it's kind of okay i also have a bit of sounds from the bearings but it seems fine um, there doesn't seem to me with my unit any major problem so i'll keep writing it stay posted for the final review and if you're still here Leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.